Okay, we're just going to go over the Henry reaction, um, which is also sometimes called the nitro aldol reaction. Now, if you've done the aldol tutorials, you'll see that it's very, very similar to an aldol reaction in that we get condensation onto a carbonyl and forming a carbon carbon single bond. Um, this can be followed by dehydration and stuff like that, typical things that could happen to an aldol reaction. Um, but I think the main thing to um, take in from the Henry reaction is that we get this um, beta nitro alcohol here. Um, and beta nitro alcohols can go off to give lots of other different compounds. For example, we can reduce that down to the amine, so we've got a amino alcohol. Um, we can have um, oxidation here to uh, carbonyl compounds or if this if one of these is a proton uh, an aldehyde which then can go on to carboxylic acid and then we're entering the area of amino acid derivatives and things like that. so you can see that these kind of compounds are very useful intermediates if you will for um, larger natural products or or drugs or things like that so it's a very powerful reaction now the henry reactions well over 100 years old um, and it's um, been used extensively in um, in um, synthesis and, and should be able to cover this in your first year undergraduate course if you if you don't cover this uh, I'm I never actually covered this in my undergraduate course it's something I came across uh, later on um, but it's very similar to the aldol reaction just with a nitro group. So here we go, let's have a look at the mechanism and I'll try and stop talking as much. Okay, so we take um, a nitro alkane and we'll just use the example there and I'll just put a proton on here in blue. Now this proton's probably got pKa in the area of about 10 um, so we just need a, a subtle base really so we'll call it base and the base picks up that proton there. Quite acidic proton. And it will rest on there. Obviously the pKa of that is going to um, go down if if uh, it's got some more stabilizing groups, so a carbonyl there or an ester there or something like that. Okay, so the first thing to do is deprotonate. Now you notice I always use the equilibrium arrows when necessary. Um, and that's simply because it's quite important to realize that these things do go backwards and forwards, uh, especially if you're looking at byproducts. Um, so I'll, I'll draw that as an equilibrium arrow. So the next step is I'll draw the carbonyl in again. So the next step is simple addition to that carbonyl. Comes in here. Like this. As you'll probably find, there's a lot of um, simplification that I go through when I'm drawing these mechanisms. These are just to understand the the process itself. So I won't go on about the the angle of attack there or the antibonding orbitals. That's hopefully been covered in other tutorials in a bit more detail. So we attack here. Now the angle of attack here, I am going to talk about that now, I haven't said that. Um, if you look at the aldol reaction and uh, the aldol uh, mechanism and stereochemistry tutorial, it would be very similar to, to this. If you had some kind of Newman projection uh, for this, you'd see how the steric hindrance of these groups can influence the actual stereochemistry of these positions later on. But I won't go into that now. So this simply adds here, it's in equilibrium, which means it can go backwards, uh, leading to byproducts. So that gives us this alcohol, which picks up a proton here. So we're in basic conditions, it'll pick up a proton from the base, from the um, conjugate acid of the base. So, so we've got R3 and R2. Now I did mention, um, and there's a proton that was up there originally as well. So just to show you, they've got you got new Carroll center there. Just draw that in. A new Carroll center here. 
So you have um, both enantiomers and diastereomers from this, so the enantiomer pairs from the diastereomers. Uh, so you will have um, a bit of a mess here if you put it any down in the Carallel C or, or GC if it's small enough to have a look at that. Or even NMR, you know, that'll, that'll all be split all over the place. So that's the product. A very simple reaction. I'll just have a look at the Newman projection for this attack here as well. Just to show you what, if you've not seen the other tutorials, uh, looking at the Newman projection. So this carbon here, we'll say it's that one, that circle at the back. So there it is. And there's R3. And there's R2. And this is a quite a good way of looking at um, the stereochemistry. Remember there's actually a proton on here as well. So that's worth remembering that this is this is coming into attack, but it's really um, part of some resonance. I just moved this down a little bit. It's part of some resonance form when it attacks. Draw a R1 um, here. Some double bond in or minus or minus. I usually put circles around my minuses just so. You can see they're not just a dash, a H. So that that carbon there is almost sp2 like. So it's flattish, but it won't be completely flat because this is all in total resonance. So it's probably probably good to draw this flat. And if you draw that as a typical Newman projection, like that, I will draw it as that resonance form. You don't you don't have to do that. I just put NR2 there. Sorry, there should be a charge on there. Yeah, so uh, that's because I've not drawn it like this anyway. So it's, it's um, should be a negative charge on the oxygen over here in this projection. I could have put the negative charge in the middle. So you can see that R1 will probably sit there. The hydrogen, which doesn't occupy much space, is sitting between these two groups here, and and. And this is how it attacks. So that gives you some idea of to the ratio of which uh, diastereomers you should see. Because of course, if we're drawing green, the alternative to that structure, if we keep the carbonyl attack first the same, would be. R1 okay so that would that would give a different uh, stereochemical outcome here but we won't go into that in detail have a look at the aldol reaction and the stereochemistry of the aldol reaction to get a, a good idea of how how you can actually influence that you can do um, uh, asymmetric reactions using catalyst or auxiliaries to actually induce that the way you want it to go and there's been lots of work done on that but I'm not going to I'm not going to focus on that for the Henry reaction. Basically, the Henry reaction, the thing to take home from the Henry reaction is this product and how it can be used to make other um, products such as the amines, the carbonyls, the carboxylic acids, and so on, which are very, very useful for uh, organic synthesis of natural products and drugs and things like that. So, that is the Henry reaction.